328. Let's see. I'm seeing, oh, Faith is, yeah, Faith is just trying to register now. She just. She's been re-registered. Yeah, she said she's registered several times. Yeah, well, I just approved her uh, under the Faith Crayson. Great, okay. And now Serene, Alexa, Sulachaya. Um, Dr. Mimi, you don't need yeah. to approve mine. I think you already did because I'm in here, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> Too <laughs> late. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let me just. So um, we're up to 264. Uh, so my co-hosts that are on here with me, you need to be paying attention to the waiting room and make sure that we're always saying admit all people into the waiting room so that we can get them rocking. Um, in some cases, if some people are trying to dial in and if, even if I admit them, if it doesn't allow them in, it's probably because I don't know how they got in because they wouldn't have gotten in with a link. But it looks like we're waiting for a couple more people to pop in. So let's, uh, let's get this show on the road since we're recording it, uh, Suzanne. My name is uh, Mary Isaac. Let me fix my screen here. So that's gone, that's gone. Uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Isaac and Dr. M AKA Dr. Mimi. I'm the one that's been behind all of those messages that have been coming to you over the last uh, couple of months. We have with us tonight all of the camp campers for the first week of Virtual Tech Trek 2021. We also have all of the coaches who are going to be working with the girls in the virtual rooms as they work in teams in the morning to solve uh, some problems and come up with some cool inventions. And then in the afternoon to work on some um, various workshop activities involved in science, technology, engineering, and math. And for parents who don't know who I am, I am a mechanical engineer, first and foremost. I am I was in the energy business my entire career, and I worked my way up from a, being a machinist to um, being uh, an executive working with customers. I describe it as an executive hand holder so I helped them figure out how we could help them solve their problems and what they would like to do. And in my retirement, which I was able to do early because I was able to make a really, really good living as an engineer. Um, in my retirement, I have found the time to be able to do what I find most important, which is trying to get more girls involved in science, technology, engineering, and math. And from my selfish perspective, uh, a lot of technology and engineering in there, which seemed to be the most scary to most girls and most women. So it is with great pleasure that I have been uh, asked to put this camp together, which we piloted last year, and working with Qualcomm, who is a San Diego company that we have been working with for seven years in the San Diego Tech Trek camp. The Tech Trek camp, by the way, has been around for 20 years. So this is over 20 years. This is not something new that we uh, just recently decided to start working on. This is an important initiative that's been going on for a long time, and that's taking young girls and exposing them to role models and exposing them to college and what that what a college type existence can do for them. And, and our goal is to, uh, since the pandemic hit, that we want to be able to continue to do that, but not in person. So through the virtual camp we, last year, we were able to engage 40 girls between uh, the girls that would normally be served by the San Diego camp and Qualcomm. And this year, we hope to engage about 650 girls and also uh, well over 200 volunteers that include about 150 uh, high school age girls and college age girls. So we think that this is an important 
adventure that we're taking this week and that we're asking you to go on with us as we go through this. And so to help with that, we have um, a couple people, the, in, the instructors that worked with us last year. We have a representative from Qualcomm who, if she would like to say a little something about the relationship that we have, and then we'll get right into talking about what we need to cover at this orientation session, which is really more introduction than anything. We are going to give you a little assignment over the um, weekend, but we will get right back to uh, what we need to do in the morning on Sunday. So, Vanessa, are you available? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Welcome, everyone, to CAM. Um, I won't take a long time, but last year I, I was part of helping Dr. Mimi um, and the instructors this, this camp uh, implement the first virtual camp, and it's been a blast uh, to just see it grow so much in just one year. Um, and I'm really excited to see um, what you girls create this week. Um, this, I don't know if many of you have, started, have done engineering before, but this really is such an incredible experience. And I hope you get inspired to invent this week and tinker. And maybe one day you'll work at Qualcomm. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, and just as a heads up, this is the orientation for Camp 1 campers. So if you are a Camp 2 camper or a Camp 3 camper and you accidentally you accidentally got the message for the orientation and I accidentally allowed you to come in the room, you don't need to be here. And in fact, when it comes time to do the introductions and the breakout rooms, um, I will probably will say goodbye. You can stick around to see and hear what all is going to be going on, but we are going to be doing that at the latter part of the session. Okay, so without further ado, uh, Suzanne, what we have a couple of instructors, as I said, Suzanne Shearer, who is from the Porterville School District, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. She's wonderful. Oh, thank you, Mary. Um, good afternoon, Tech Trek campers and coaches. We are so happy to have you here this evening. Um, my name, like Mary said, is Suzanne Shear and I am an educator for Porterville Unified School District. I help direct our 14 career pathway programs at 16 high school sites and um, supervise about 150 teachers and help them develop amazing curriculum and experiences much like this um, that we are doing throughout this next week. So I am super excited to be, be here, like I said, and excited to get you guys started on your Tech Trek journey. But before I begin, um, I am um, the lead social coach for the week, but I'd also like to introduce Kim Wiki, who is one of our engineers with us today that will also be working with you throughout this week. And she is our lead build coach. So Kim, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I guess I have to. Sure, that works. <laughs> <Dog>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a perpetual smart Alex. So yeah, I am Kimberly Wicke. I am a doctoral candidate in mechanical engineering. I'm doing my dissertation on robotics. So you guys will have a chance to learn quite a bit about that through this. Um, this, by the way, is also my service dog, Sirius, who has decided that I need her right now. Um, She's so much bigger than last year. That's amazing. Yes. My little girl here has grown almost a full 40 pounds over the course since last year's camp. Um, so she might pop on camera periodically as we're working through things, don't mind her. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's me in a nutshell, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. All right, thank you, Kim. Well, throughout this week, we have a set of challenges that the teams will be going through. And we have, um, an alumni Tech Trek camper herself named Alexis, who has been putting together this list of challenges for you. 
And so she would like to introduce the challenges that you will be experienced as a team at this point. So I'm going to stop share my screen for the moment, and I'm going to let Alexis share on what these challenges are going to be throughout the week. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, my name is Alexis Kim, and I'm the social media coordinator for our camp this year. And I'm going to be sharing with you um, the camp challenges that I've been putting together. So all campers have access to um, this Google Slides called Camp Challenges. And this is basically an activity throughout the whole camp um, that we organized um, for those that want to go above and beyond, those that want to challenge themselves. Um, and so what this is, it's basically an activity of challenges. We have six total challenges to do um, every day throughout the week. And this is a team, team effort. It's something so that your team can bond together and work together. And your goal is to complete um, these mini challenges given in these slides for a chance to win prizes at the end of camp. And so um, I'll show you some of the challenges right now. Um, challenge number one is the media release forms, which is basically a freebie because everyone already signed these. Um, and these are, this is the next challenge, um, which will be in, which the coaches will be introducing to you, uh, later today in the breakout rooms. And so at the end, so there's challenges for every day. And at the end, the coaches will be checking, um, to see if every single team member has completed the challenge. And hopefully at the end of camp, you'll receive a prize. Um, so this, this Google Slides, it's going to be located in, the, uh, in a Google Drive folder that the coaches uh, will be sharing with you um, today, later, uh, at, during the end of the meeting. Thank you so much, Alexis, for sharing on the challenges. I hope all of you campers are just as excited as getting started as us coaches are excited to teach you. So with that, um, can everybody see my screen? Um, I'm going to start the first portion of the camp. And basically what I'm going to do is I am going to start prepping you on key concepts and ideas that you will use next week during the morning Qualcomm engineering experience. Um, Suzanne, we actually see your presenter notes oh, you can. and not the actual slides. Oh my God. Unless you want us to see the presenter notes. No, that's weird yeah. that that's popping up. Here, let me try. Can you see my screen at all? No, no. no. Not, sure. not right now. All right. Technical difficulties. Let's see here. But that's why we're here to troubleshoot. I know. Give me one moment. I just exited my drive. Okay. All right. Can everyone see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. So um, each morning from nine to noon every day, you will be working on your robotics portion of your tech trek journey. During this session, you will learn about your strengths, your interests, and your values, various engineering careers, and the basics of circuitry and coding. You will also utilize the engineering design process to design and construct an amazing automated hat. All materials and items that you will need to complete your project can be found in the kits you received and will be discussed in more detail throughout next week. But tonight, the only item that I want you to have from your kits is the blue wearable tech student notebook. So if you don't have this notebook next to you, go ahead and take a moment to grab this book before we get started. So any camper, if you do not have your blue wearable tech um, summer 2021 notebook, it looks like this. I know my blur's on, so it's hard to see. Um, make sure you go grab it right now because we will be utilizing 
the first few pages of this notebook throughout this presentation. We may have a few campers that aren't picking up their bags until tomorrow. So okay. in that case, they should get a piece of paper and a pencil so you can write down some notes. Yes, make sure to take some notes because all of the ideas and the understandings of what I'm going to be discussing tonight will apply to your invention next week. So I'm just going to give everyone a few moments to make sure they have that. All right. Does everyone have your wearable tech notebook? It's hard to see with, you know, 287 participants. So <laughs> uh, Suzanne, the, uh -huh. my name is Pam Meyer. I'm wondering, are we going to have a copy of this slide program as a social coach? Oh, you do have access to this already. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you where that is. All right. So I'm hoping everyone has a copy of your tech notebook next to you. If not, like Mary said, grab a pencil and paper, and we are going to begin. As mentioned, each day we are going to start the morning with our Qualcomm robotic session. This portion of your Tech Trek experience was sponsored by the Qualcomm Corporation, which is located in sunny San Diego. Qualcomm, which is a company of inventors, has sponsored the camp because they believe in inspiring the next generation of engineers and inventors, which is you. Understanding a little bit about the Qualcomm Corporation and their path will help you take on the role of an inventor or an engineer next week as you design and construct an internet of things wearable tech invention. So who exactly is Qualcomm? Qualcomm was founded in 1985 by a guy named Erwin Jacobs and six other engineers. Their name is actually derived from quality communications, Qualcomm. They are a company of inventors. They invent the smart in smartphones and they employ people from all over the world. And what kind of put Qualcomm on the map was their development of CDMA technology. This technology stands for code division multiple access and it paved the way for all our smartphones and smart devices of today. CDMA technology is what put Qualcomm on the map for designing and manufacturing telecommunication products. However, as any scientist, inventor, or engineer knows, it wasn't without taking risks. In the 1980s, the Qualcomm company took a risk to develop and push the CDMA technology for phones. However, they weren't the first to come up with this idea. This idea was actually discovered in the 1940s by famous Hollywood actress Hedy Lamarr and composer George Anthale. They were inspired by the way musical notes are arranged and theorized that multiple frequencies could be used to send a single radio transmission. They called this idea frequency hopping and showed that this could prevent a radio signal from being jammed. So these two patented their idea and gave it to the US government for use during World War II. But sadly, after the war ended, this discovery was largely ignored and the patent eventually expired. In today's wireless world, we often take for granted our ability to connect in seconds from virtually anywhere with apps that make work more productive and play more fun. But that constant connectivity is made possible by this technology that could have been lost to history. So in the 1980s, as the telecom industry focused its resources on one technology, Qualcomm dared to wonder, what if there was a way to do something better? So in a daring departure, they began experience, experimenting with the CDMA technology a concept that would change the face of wireless communication. But what is CDMA? And why is this important to the development of our smart devices that we have today? In the 1980s, 
the telecommunication industry focused on something that was called TDMA, which stands for Time Division Multiple Access. I know it sounds complicated, and really, I'm just going to kind of explain very simply what this is, but there was a lot of problems with this technology. And the reason for this was it only allowed a certain number of, of users, phone users, to be on a single wave fre frequency at a time. So what this meant was a lot of drop calls and very slow connections. And so Qualcomm with CDMA, what this did was it opened up the frequency spectrum by assigning a code that is actually scrambled and reconstructed at the receiving end. And so this meant multiple users could actually speak at the same time. This allowed more conversations to be delivered on the same amount of spectrum. So pushing this technology was super risky for Qualcomm. But again, as any inventor, scientist, or engineer knows, even seemingly crazy ideas can lead to great discoveries. And so here's a video of Erwin Jacobs discussing the moment that put Qualcomm on the map. The industry had looked and seen that the cellular business was really growing, but staying with analog with first generation FM radios was not the right solution. How do we go digital? Companies around the world had looked at CDMA, played with it a while, and they had all thrown it away, and had gone with TDMA or FDMA. One of the things did catch their attention that rather than perhaps a three to one improvement in the number of customers you could accommodate in a given antenna or in a given bandwidth, with CDMA, we came to the point that would be 10 to 20. It would provide a significant economic advantage by being able to get many more users in the same amount of spectrum. I thought there was about a 50% probability that somebody was going to be able to raise their hand and say, you forgot about this and this is why it's not going to work. Nobody did. So the next step we had to do was build a demonstration system. We worked day and night to prepare two base stations and a mobile terminal for a demonstration. We knew we couldn't wait too long because the industry was rushing ahead with TDMA and if we missed that window, we'd have to wait for a third generation. And so we had to move quickly. In September, I had to make a decision whether to send out invitations for people to come in to see our demonstration at the beginning of November or not. And probably 85 or 90 percent of the engineers felt we better wait and decided to go ahead and send out the invitations. Beginning in November, everybody showed up here in San Diego. We had about 120 people, and we had several people make presentations on CDMA. Then I was making the last presentation and getting ready to send everybody out when one of the engineers in the back of the room began to wave at me and to keep talking. And so I kept talking, being a university professor, adding 45 minutes or 50 minutes to a talk is easy. It was about 50 minutes later, another wave came that it was okay to send people out, luckily. Probably another half an hour, people would have realized something was wrong, and there would have been no Qualcomm. is what we call a fabulous semiconductor company. This means that Qualcomm produces the technology, but other companies actually make the chips for the ideas that they come up with. So Qualcomm makes their money in two ways. They do this by creating chips or chipsets, which are used in our smart devices and through patents. Now patents protect an inventor's ideas, and Qualcomm has over 6,000 patents, so over 6,000 ideas that they have come up with. One of the most notable is airplane mode. And you can see on the screen, I have listed in the cloud, a few other of Qualcomm's notable patents. Since Qualcomm makes the chips that go into our smart devices, 
They work with major phone manufacturers and cell phone carriers throughout the world, and they have become one of the leaders in developing 5G technology. So how does Qualcomm make money through patents? And what exactly is a patent? Well, patents protect an inventor's ideas. And if someone wants to produce a product that has a patent, they have to pay the patent owner for the rights. So in other words, if somebody wants to produce something that Qualcomm has patented, they have to pay a fee to Qualcomm. And so think about Qualcomm's 6,000 patents, they will get a fee for every time someone in the telecommunication industry wants to produce maybe a chip that they have patented or some technology that they have invented. So when an inventor applies for a patent, they have to be very detailed in their description of how their invention, which could be a device or a product works. They must also include sketches and schematics, which are drawings that describe the build process and details how the device works. Although you won't be applying for a patent this week, all of you in this camp will be creating sketches of your wearable tech design invention. And you will be creating detailed schematics to explain how your automated tech invention will work. Here is an example of the dishwashing machine patent. And um, I just thought this was kind of a cool patent. You can actually look up all US approved patents um, through the US um, patent organ, um, department. But the story goes with this patent, there was a lady named Josephine Cochran and she was a wealthy socialite in Shelbyville, Illinois, when she got the idea to invent a dishwasher. So Cochran employed many servants to perform housework in her mansion but started washing her fine china herself when she discovered that some of her servants had accidentally chipped some of her china. So Cochran found her brief exposure to housework extremely unpleasant. And she resolved to build a machine that could wash the dishes for, for um, that could wash the dishes for her. So as the result, um, she created the first commercially successful dishwasher, which she patented in 1886. And so I'm going to show you real quick this hyperlink. Let's see if it opens. And so you could see, you can search almost any patent on the internet. And so when you apply for patents, as I explained, it has to be very detailed. And so this is the 1886 patent, which Josephine applied for. And you can see her drawings and schematics of how her invention was going to work. And this is going to be very similar to when you're designing your automated hat next week, which we're going to discuss with you in more detail later. But as you design this hat, you're going to have to explain to us with drawings and schematics how your invention is going to work. Okay, sorry, for some reason it stopped my, my slideshow. Oops, hold on. I clicked a link and it went away. <laughs> Let me figure this out. Problem with technology sometimes. It's reality. I know, it happens. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Let me go back to present. All right, so that's a little bit about the dishwasher patent and, um, and how to actually apply for a patent. So Qualcomm um, not only makes money off chipsets and patents, and, um, and they developed CDMA technology, which we talked about. But since the introduction of the CDMA, Qualcomm has come a long way in wireless technologies in, and is currently at the forefront of what is called 5G technology. And I'm sure 
all of you campers have heard about this 5G technology, right? And so what is 5G and what does it stand for? And why are so many tech organizations so excited about 5G? So the G stands for generation. So 1G was the first generation, 2G the second generation, and so forth. 1G was actually our first cell phones, which I know all of you are probably too young to remember, but they were just analog. So this meant that our first cell phones, all you could do was call. You couldn't play apps. You couldn't connect to the internet. All you could do was call and talk to someone. And remember what I said about the first generation technology, it had a lot of drop calls. The connectivity was kind of slow, didn't work so well. So with CDMA technology came 2G or the second generation. Now this technology actually enabled the first digital phone. And with this technology, it was super cool because now users could actually call, but they could also text and they could send pictures. But when I say text, the text was really limited. And I don't know if some of our older um, coaches on the phone remember this, the numbers were actually the way you texted. So like ABC was on number one and you had to click it like three times if you wanted the letter C. So it was really cumbersome to text. It wasn't like what we have today. Um, with 3G came the first smartphone and users were now able to connect to the internet and use GPS tracking. With 4G, users could start to download HD movies. And with 5G, users see faster connection and download speeds. And so I'd like to show you a video detailing the different cell generations. Every new generation of wireless networks delivers faster speeds and more functionality to our smartphones. 1G brought us the very first cell phones. 2G let us text for the first time. 3G brought us online and 4G delivered the speeds that we enjoy today. But as more users come online, 4G networks have just about reached the limit of what they're capable of at a time when users want even more data for their smartphones and devices. Now we're headed toward 5G, the next generation of wireless. It will be able to handle a thousand times more traffic than today's networks, and it'll be up to 10 times faster than 4G LTE. Just imagine downloading an HD movie in under a second, and then let your imagination run wild. 5G will be the foundation for virtual reality, autonomous driving, the Internet of Things, and stuff we can't even yet imagine. Oh, that should have said imagine. So what I want you to look at is in the columns um, where it says the kilobits, megabits. What I want you to check out are the bytes per second that each generation was capable of. So this is really speed. So 3G could process 1,000 bytes per second. 4G is 10 to the 6th power, right? So 4G is a million bytes per second. And 5G is a billion bytes per second. So you could see how each generation has gotten faster and faster speed connectivity. Wow. I mean, imagine what the world could do with these faster connection speeds. With high speeds, superior reliability, and less delays, 5G can, can expand the mobile ecosystem into new realms. 5G can impact every industry, making safer transpor transportation, um, change healthcare, precision agriculture, et cetera, a reality. So 5G opened the door to something that we call the Internet of Things. We often abbreviate this to IOT. What I like to say is these faster connections have allowed everyday dumb objects to become smart. So because fast Wi-Fi networks have become so common, objects like refrigerators, washing machines, and cars can include internet access with software to make use of the internet connection. I, I want you to think of this example. Imagine scanning your groceries as you put them in a refrigerator and you pull them out for use. Each item could tell the refrigerator what it was, its expiration date, and other useful information. 
the refrigerator could then collect and organize this information to send to you. You might get an email with recipe ideas, for example, based on what food you have, or an email with a grocery shopping list. In the bigger, less personal world, imagine water and gas pipes that notified your town if there was a leak, or sensors in the woods that notified firefighters of a fire. I want you to think, if you could create an IoT device, what would you create? Remember, what an IoT device is, is it connects everyday objects to the internet, which allows this object to capture and share data. So if you could create an IoT device, what would you create and why? We're gonna come back to this. So think about that question because in a moment, I'm gonna have you share your responses in the chat. So go ahead and open your notebook to page eight. So at this time, I'd like you to open up your notebook to page eight. And I'm gonna show you a video about how 5G could transform the world. So think about how could 5G and IoT benefit the world and if you could create an IoT invention to benefit the world, what would it be? So think about that question and feel free to jot notes as we're watching this video. What is 5G and what makes it so different from anything we've ever experienced? 5G is the next generation of wireless that will redefine the ways we connect to the world around us. 5G will make possible a connectivity fabric that weaves everything and everyone together, creating new business and economic opportunities around the globe. The new innovations behind 5G will deliver data faster, with less lag and even more reliability. To better understand 5G, it is important to know a little about radio waves and how they work. Your smartphone and other wireless devices use very specific frequencies on the radio frequency spectrum to send and receive data. As we use more devices and data, those radio frequencies have gotten crowded. Think about a highway. As traffic builds up, it is important to upgrade or even rebuild the highway system to handle more cars and speed the flow of traffic. It's the same idea with wireless communications. The engineers behind 5G have invented new ways to utilize radio spectrum so that the network can handle 100 times more data than 4G, faster and more reliably. This new capacity is possible because of two important technological breakthroughs. The first is the use of millimeter waves, short radio waves in higher radio frequency bands. For decades, researchers believed it was impossible to use these bands of spectrum for cellular. High frequency millimeter waves don't travel well through objects or buildings. Even leaves on a tree can block a signal. In 5G, engineers have broken this barrier, opening a giant express lane for data. The second breakthrough is Massive MIMO, which stands for Multiple Input, Multiple Output. Massive MIMO base stations have dozens more antennas, and they're able to send out concentrated, hyper-precise beam form signals to a particular user. These beams can bounce from base station to base station to relay signals around obstacles and avoid interruptions. Another important 5G invention opens new pathways for the kinds of data that just can't wait to prioritize critical data and allow it to transmit almost immediately. 5G will redefine work, education, healthcare, and deliver a new level of connectivity to rural communities. It's taken almost four decades and tens of billions of dollars in research and development to get to 5G. Wireless technology has already transformed our world. 
5G will open the door to possibilities we haven't even imagined yet. It's pretty amazing when you think about 5G and kind of the connectivity and all of the information that can be sent to, to these devices. I can think of ways that it can definitely benefit the world. Like imagine if somebody is riding in an ambulance and all of their vital signs are being sent to the hospital even prior to the ambulance getting there, which might increase the chances of saving someone's life. And so that's an example of how an IoT device could be used in a beneficial way. Um, and so I want you to think about that as, as we um, kind of go throughout um, explaining these concepts tonight, because next week you're going to be trying to tie IoT into an invention that you come up with and that you design and create. And so at this point, I want to test your 5G knowledge with all of the information that we have gone through. So I want you guys to take just about 60 seconds, one minute, read through the generation of wireless devices on page eight. And so you have 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and match the generation of wireless device to its main functionality. Let's see if you remember. So 1G, where would you connect the line to the main function, functionality? 2G, where would you connect it? 3G, 4G, and so on. And then in a second, we'll, we'll review your answers and see how you did. All right, so feel free to unmute yourself at this time if you know the answer. So 1G, where should the line go? 1G, anyone? What, what matches the main function, functionality for 1G? Oh, Sienna raised her hand. Sienna, go ahead and unmute yourself and just shout it out. Do you know how to unmute or can you? They can't unmute themselves right now. No, they can. They can. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I, it's going to be too difficult for me to find her in 283 people. Um, yeah, well, write it in the chat. There is a way to search. Will the, will the space bar work? Just holding down the space bar. Oh, okay. That happened. Okay. There you go. Yay. Okay. I was trying to click like the button. Okay. Uh, it's analog voice calls only. Yes. Analog voice calls. Woohoo. You got it. Um, what about 2G? What do you guys think for 2G? Uh, digital voice calls, text and picture messaging. I think you said digital voice calls, text and picture imaging. You are correct. 3G, what do you guys think for 3G? Very smartphone with mobile internet and GPS tracking. Perfect, yes, this was our first smartphones, right? So we could connect to the internet, have GPS tracking. What about 4G? Yes, you are all correct. Surfing the web and streaming HD videos online. And last, 5G, the last option, we have fastest wireless, fastest wireless speed, 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 fastest and so this is our 5G technology, right? And so with Internet of Things, we have a description on page nine in your notebooks. And as I mentioned, remember, so our 5G paved the way for the Internet of Things. And so page nine of your notebook discusses this technology in more details. And if we look at that paragraph, which is in your notebook, it reads, Imagine a world where cars, thermostats, mobile devices, appliances, and many other items could collect and exchange data wirelessly and respond to your needs in an intelligent way. 
This is possible with IoT or the Internet of Things. Qualcomm is helping make IoT a reality by inventing and engineering the technologies of IoT. Those inventions in turn open the door for other IoT-based inventions in consumer electronics, smart homes, smart cities, as well as voice and music. So I'm gonna show a brief video again, and this is just a brief video discussing Qualcomm's IoT. Hi, I'm Emily. I draw cartoons. Today, I want to learn about the Internet of Things. Meet Don from Qualcomm. He's going to teach me about the Internet of Things and the evolution of our growing smart world. So Don, the Internet of Things, how smart can a thing really be? From smartphones to smart homes, smart cars, and even smart cities, the technology is actually advancing pretty fast. However, there's one thing missing from this whole picture, and that is connectivity. Okay, but how does this like actually work? Like if I were gonna draw this out? All of these things are becoming smarter because people are putting chips inside of things. So let's call that chip a brain. So step two in that process is for that brain to program tasks. But step three in this whole process is how does that device not only program tasks, but also interact with other devices, making it more connected and then making your world around you thus smarter. In Qualcomm with our advanced connectivity technologies from advanced Bluetooth to Wi-Fi 11AX, to actually wireless connectivity with 5G, that is the connectivity fabric that's actually benefiting you as well as society as a whole. How would this smart world really look in the real world? Why don't I give you a scenario? Okay, so you're planning a dinner party. Your smart oven is telling you what temperature, what time you have to put the meal in, all those good things. But because now it's connected to other devices in your surroundings, it can actually tell your smartwatch, you can go for a run while your meal is cooking and still getting back enough time to be able to make sure your meal doesn't burn. It sounds like I'm really gonna be able to outsource a lot of my own personal brain, which is great, but what are the larger implications of this? Imagine if you can actually save energy by having not only a smart thermostat, but that thermostat interacting with other devices in your home to make sure that, that you're saving energy. So that's what really creating a smarter world with these smarter and connected devices really means from a broader good perspective. So Don, these things can think, but can they love? You should hug your oven every once in a while. But so. not when it's on. But not when it's on. I've made that mistake. Right, because you know love can burn. <laughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Emily. Oops. I don't. All right. So the Internet of Things can be classified into four categories. And I, again, I'm on page nine of your notebook. And so those four categories are consumer electronics, smart cities, smart homes, and voice and music. So let's go over an example of a consumer electronics. I want you guys to think of a fitness tracker, right? Like Fitbit. So the fitness tracker can collect our number of steps that we take, our heart rate, and other components within the tracker can send that information wirelessly. A smart city example would be the use of traffic signals. So traffic signals with sensors that can monitor traffic and work together to adapt the changing traffic conditions, which can help solve traffic problems. So the traffic signal can sense the amount of traffic and make a smart decision, such as the rate of keeping green lights on, et cetera. A smart home example would be the app on your phone to control the lights in your house, open or close the garage door, or see what items are in your fridge. All of this could be monitored wirelessly when you are away from home. And of course, voice and music. I know you guys all, I all know voice and music with Alexa or Sirius. And so this is, this is also the ability to connect like Bluetooth headphones to your phone so that you can listen to your music, make phone calls without compromising sound quality, um, even if you are a short distance away from your home. So this week, or going into next week, your IoT wearable tech invention project will fall under the category of consumer electronics. This weekend, what I want you to think about is if you create an automated hat and you could actually connect your hat to a sensor, what smart decision 
might you want it to make? So, and you could go ahead and write this down in your notebook. So take the time to kind of write down what I say. So this is what I want you to think about. If you create an automated hat and you could connect it to a sensor or to the internet, what smart decision would you want that hat to make? So that's your challenge I want you to think about. On the same page, there are a couple of questions at the bottom. And it says, what do you find most interesting about IoT? How could IoT be used to benefit society? And if you could create any IoT device, what would you invent? So what I would like all of our campers to do is jot down responses to those questions and the very last question, if you could create any IoT device, what would you invent? I'd like for you to add an idea to the chat. And then we'll kind of look through and read some of those ideas out loud. So take some time to answer the question, what do you find most interesting about IoT? How could IoT be used to benefit society? And if you could create an any IoT device, what would you invent? And go ahead and share some of your ideas in the chat if you would like. And I'm gonna kind of look at the chat and see if anybody has shared. Let's see. Okay, I see someone put a closet that scans your body when you walk in and picks out an outfit for you based on your taste in the weather. I like that. Do you know where I live? It's 110 today. Couldn't believe it. It's so hot outside. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Yes, yeah, someone just put the question. A device that constantly translates information about your health from your body, analyzes it and alerts you if anything is wrong. That's a good idea too. A premature baby incubator that checks the temp and adjusts to what the baby needs to live. Glasses that would show you any information that you want on the internet. Oh, I like that idea. Cars that are more connected to the internet to warn drivers about icy patches on the road ahead or drivers that are going around a corner too fast in order to be able to lower the amount of accidents. You know what, Jenna, that's a good idea. I could actually see car inventors, especially in some of those cold areas, creating some sort of a sensor like that. Create a device that would inform you if you are in immediate face of danger. Oh, a water bottle that tracks how much you actually drink every day. I need that one because I always forget to drink my water. Here, I'm just going to read a couple more. Um, a device that listens to someone speak and translates it for you and then does the same for you when you speak. Now, um, B, did you, um, was that like, um, so they translate different languages. I like that. I would create a wearable, maybe a watch that can account the amount of carbon footprint you use. I like the one about the plate that will look at what you eat and tell you what you shouldn't, shouldn't eat, that records what you eat and recommends what you should eat to be healthier. I like that. Oh, that's a great one too. I know they go so fast. So I might I have know. Them. Well, we will, we will, we will capture these and we'll remind you of them over the course of the week. Yeah. I, yes, we can share out some of your ideas in chat, but you guys have brilliant ideas and I can't wait to see what you invent and create next week. So on page 10, um, it's now time to test your Qualcomm knowledge. And so we're just gonna do this together to save time. And so what I want you guys to do is just unmute yourself, shout out the answer if you know it. And so we're just gonna go through this together. So who remembers what the name Qualcomm stands for? 
Quality, 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 quality communication. Quality communication. And when was Qualcomm started in? What year and by who? 1985 and Erwin Jacobs. 1985 and Erwin Jacobs. And Qualcomm is a company of, oh, okay, hold on. This is a typo in your notebook. It says investors with an S, but what should that S become? I could do it on my, it's easier on the computer. It should say inventors. It's right, um, it's right at the word bank and you can see like even on my slide, I copied the word bank from the notebook. So it should say inventors, not investors. So I'm just gonna put that one there. And then Qualcomm invents the blank that everybody loves. What do they invent? The tech? Yes, the tech that everybody loves. And Qualcomm makes its money how? Patents and, patents and chipsets. Yes, patents and chipsets. And then a patent is something that protects your ideas. 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 And how many patents does Qualcomm have? 6,000. 6,000. Yes, 6,000. And what's one invention that Qualcomm patented that is super notable? Airplane mode. Airplane, airplane, airplane mode. mode. Yeah, airplane mode. And then what's the, this one we really didn't cover, but I'm just going to tell you. Um, or I'm sure you guys can guess. Percent of Qualcomm employees are engineers versus percent that are non-engineers. Yeah, 70 to 30 percent. So really, you would think here we have this company of inventors, but they employ other people, not just engineers. And IoT stands for Internet of Things. Internet of Things. Internet of things. Awesome. You guys did an awesome job. All right. So I hope that you are all excited to take on the role of Qualcomm inventor during the Tech Trek morning Qualcomm experience. During next week, on the slide, you can see it says Think of It Lab Path to Invention. And during next week, you are actually going to be traveling down this path to invention as you design and construct your own IoT wearable tech invention. Although you won't be apl applying for a patent just yet, you will be utilizing the engineering design process to identify a need. You will be building a prototype. You will name your invention and you will share your final product with others. I am so ready to begin this journey with you and hope that you are ready to take it as well. So at this point, you are going to be meeting members of your team and the coaches that will help support you throughout this week. They are going to introduce you to your team's second challenge and weekend activity. And so as you can see on the screen, your second challenge is a Flipgrid introductory video. Your coaches in the breakout room will help you log on to Flipgrid they're going to make sure that you know your Flipgrid ID. Um, and if there are any issues, we're going to help you problem solve so you can access prior to exiting this meeting. So again, I cannot wait to see your introductory videos that you submit this weekend. And I can't wait to work with all of you on Monday and see your amazing IoT inventions that you come up with. So at this point, back to you, Mary. Thanks. Thanks so much. Let's switch you, let's unpin you. There we go. Okay. 